uh, while our political correspondent Tom Harwood is indeed with us in the studio because uh, the opposition are now pointing to not just the tax issue itself, but the way that Zahawi handled the affair afterwards, mm -hmm. um, threatening um, the, the uh, journalists with legal action, saying he'd been smeared. And this whole question, as, as the uh, Sir Laurie Magnus uh, quote was, untrue public statement. Not you know, really what an MP should be up to, let alone a cabinet minister. No, and this is the point of the Sir, Larry, Sir Laurie Magnus report. Not necessarily that the issue was having this trouble with HMRC, not necessarily that this dispute ended up with a penalty. That can be argued mm. either way. How much did uh, Nadim Zahawi think he was doing the right thing or otherwise? Who's to say? The issue that Sir Laurie Magnus pointed to in terms of clear breaches of the ministerial code, in fact, seven of them, were times in which uh, Nadim Zahawi should have been open, transparent and honest about being under investigation and indeed about having received a penalty when he did not. He should have mentioned it in his register of interests. He should have responded to the propriety and ethics team noting this. And he should have been more open with subsequent prime ministers Liz Truss mm. and Rishi Sunak. That's what Sir Laurie Magnus found. The issue, not so much the HMRC investigation, but how he responded to it and how uh, open or otherwise he was about it. Yeah, now, Helen Wakeley, the um, minister who was doing the rounds this morning, was pressed on this issue. Her defence was, well, this is all a question for the chief whip, but surely Sunak would realise what the knock-on would be and would have to address really what happens to Zahabi within the party. I mean, do we know if the, if the whip's office are looking at this? Well, this is the remarkable thing about the Sunak uh, prime ministership. We've had a number of occasions when questions of whipping have been asked directly of number 10. Mm. I've sat in the number nine um, press briefing room and, and asked directly the prime minister's spokesman this on a number of issues about a number of different individuals. Yeah. Most Recently, of course, Andrew Bridgen, uh, where many questions were raised about his conduct over um, conspiracy theories about vaccines. COVID vaccines. Yeah. Uh, and the answer from the Prime Minister's office has always been, this is a matter for the chief whip. Now, to some extent, that, of course, washes the Prime Minister's hands clean of things. Mm. On the other hand, it makes him seem like an absent Prime Minister. Yeah, which is what the opposition are using as, as, as the weapon to beat him with. Uh, it certainly is. And it, it, does, it does mean that he can sort of take a step back and, and, and not sort of get too muddied in with these questions. But ultimately, the big criticism there comes in. If you're delegating stuff to your chief whip, Who's ultimately, yeah. you appointed your yeah. chief whip. Does he not answer to you? Now, the other aspect was that I know there was much um, talk in Westminster this morning about Lord Haig, mm. William Haig, perhaps being the replacement as party chairman. Yes. Um, he's come up pretty firmly saying, not me, Gov. Don't want that. He has indeed. He was riding at the number one spot in the bookies' odds to become the next party chairman. And uh, with a tweet just uh, under an hour ago, mm. he has really uh, slashed those odds to nil, saying he would not, uh, under any circumstances, <laughs> return to public life, return to frontline politics, least of all chairman of the Conservative Party. Given these circumstances, I suppose he might have had as a rider. Tom, thank you for that.